Okay, we are now live. So um, we're gonna give a weather update for what's to come over the next few days. We have Brian Garcia with the National Weather Service, Dave Reed with OR3 and Under Sheriff Chris Clark. So we're gonna start out with um, Brian with the National Weather Service, just to give us an update on what, what we're gonna expect over the weekend. All right, thanks, Ashley, and good afternoon or evening, everybody. Brian Garcia, National Weather Service. Um, I'm gonna talk through what we're looking at for the next uh, next couple days. And so this image that you're seeing here, this loop is a satellite image of what we call total precipitable water. So in other words, how much water is in the column of atmosphere. And where we're looking right now is actually down in the Hawaiian Island area. That area has been getting inundated by a lot of rain and it's picking up all this moisture from the tropics and subtropics and hurling it directly towards uh, the central California coast. And so that's where we're that's where we're going to be in for the next few days starting tomorrow. So we do have a flood watch out for Santa Cruz County. That flood watch is Thursday through Sunday. And essentially what a flood watch means is that we have flooding possible over the next several days. During the peak of our rain Thursday into Friday, uh, Friday morning, that is when the wide, widespread flooding is going to occur, but we will have residual flooding right on through Friday, Saturday, and potentially even into Sunday. So it's really important that under this watch that you take action now to protect your lives, your, your family's lives, your friends' lives, and your pets' lives, and of course, harden your property if you can at all or just get out of mother nature's way. And so what we're looking at is in the Santa Cruz mountains specifically, this is the probability of getting in excess of three inches of rainfall. And there is an 80 to 100% probability of us getting in excess of three inches of rainfall. Some models are taking it up to a full uh, foot plus of rainfall over about a uh, 18 to 24 hour period in the Santa Cruz mountains. So this is a lot of rain in a very short period of time. If you remember the impacts that we had during the, the storms in January, it's essentially gonna be a rinse lather repeat of that. On top of that, um, or I should say, because of that, we are in an excessive rainfall outlook. So we have a moderate risk of excessive rainfall, meaning that we could exceed our flash flood guidance threshold so if your phones light up because you get a wireless emergency alert for a, a flash flood warning or a flood warning, that's because we're getting high intensity rain rates that could cause life threatening flooding across portions of the county. And if you get that alert, that means you're in that area that we drew the box for. So it's important that you take action when those come across. One of the areas we're all looking at is the uh, San Lorenzo of the big trees area. And the forecast just came out uh, a little bit ago, and it now takes it to 23.4 feet. Um, that puts us into a major flood stage. So expect a very sharp rise on the river tomorrow evening and overnight tomorrow with peaks reaching uh, that maximum peak probably in the overnight hours of Thursday night into Friday. Uh, and then it's going to take a, a little bit to recede. And of course, all that rip, all that water has got to go downstream. And so it's going to be exiting out through the city of Santa Cruz. So expect rises in the rivers all along the San Lorenzo and all across the county as well. So we're talking the Coralitas, the Sakel, um, we're, you know, the, the Aptos Creek. Everything has the potential and is more likely to flood than not with this event. The other thing we have going on is wind. We, we're expecting quite a bit of wind. So trees are gonna come down again. I know there have been a lot of magnolia trees blooming in town and uh, cherry blossoms popping. That means we have a lot more surface area for the wind to grab onto. So trees are gonna come down again and we will go through a period of uh, significant power outages again. So with that, I'll say um, thank you for letting me share a few slides and uh, by all means, make sure that you take care of yourselves take care of each other, look out for each other. And of course, it, this is a serious situation. Be nice to each other throughout this entire situation. Thank you, Brian, all great advice. And now let's hand it over to Dave Reed. 
Good evening, everybody. Thanks, um, Brian. I think you might want to stop sharing your screen. Um, people don't need to see my head twice. Um, but uh, just wanted to relay that from the county's Office of Response, Recovery, and Resilience, we've been coordinating closely with Brian and the National Weather Service all week. Um, we're preparing for, as Brian said, very similar outcomes from a flooding standpoint that we saw in January. So our Emergency Operations Center has been activated today and will be activated to tomorrow through, through this storm series. Um, we have been sending out messages. So community members, you've probably seen um, reverse 911 text and email messages from the county office um, of emergency services helping to inform you and remind you that we're not out of the woods with the winter storms. And this is a big one. We're looking at this as a big event. Um, so we are um, wanting everybody to take those precautionary steps as Brian articulated um, to prepare yourself um, for what's what's coming. And uh, this is the first storm in a, in a potential series. So we'll be watching closely as, as the weekend and next week unfolds and be in touch with you as well through those communication channels. As a reminder, if you haven't signed up for Code Red, we wanna recommend that you do that. That's one of the best, best ways for us to communicate with you um, during emergencies. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to Under Sheriff Chris Clark um, to talk a little bit about how we're gonna be responding. Yeah, and good evening, everybody. Chris Clark, uh, the Under Sheriff with the, with the Sheriff's Office here. Uh, it just seems like here, here we go again with, with more weather. And frankly, this weather sounds like it's going to stick with us for the, basically the next week, just with, what, with, uh, with, with a large amount of areas getting saturated with water to the extent that likely what's going to happen. And, and just to tell you, kind of as we kind of go through decision making when it comes to evacuation warnings and orders. So, you know, obviously we're, we're in unified command with our fire and law partners. And then also we're in, in really close coordination with the uh, with Dave Reed over at, uh, uh, with OR3 and, and obviously Brian. And so what we've seen is kind of just a, a gradual sort of uh, negative trending when it comes to the weather. It just doesn't seem like, frankly, it's we're, we're getting much more positive news out of, out, out of Brian's reports. And so kind of what that means for us is that essentially um, that tomorrow, I mean, we, we could see tomorrow going into tomorrow evening or tomorrow evening going into Friday morning uh, and likely, potentially, over the next few days, uh, we could see flooding like we saw during the New Year's Eve uh, system. Uh, and so going from north to south, I mean, that, that looks like, you know, from Felton Grove to Paradise Park to downtown Soquel to the Aptos Flats area and then areas in and around the Coralitas and Salsa Puedas Creek. So, you know, if you, if you saw flooding during that New Year's Eve event, there is a there is a pretty high probability you could see flooding again. And so it's, and, and, and it's unfortunate, uh, you know, to have to be dealing with this again for like the third and potentially fourth time for some folks. Uh, but really, the, you know, we just want to stress that and kind of let you know what's to come. So if, if this weather continues to trend the way that it does, I think you can expect evacuation warnings coming, coming tomorrow in the early afternoon, if not during the morning. Um, and really what that means is that you know, is really, that's the time to, 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 if you need additional time to leave your home, definitely prepare, gather all of your stuff. Um, you know, as you heard, Brian, you know, protecting your pets, having plans set so that, and, and potentially leave. If, if you have mobility issues, especially if you're, if you're of, of, a, of a, you know, if you, if you have some sort of special need, um, then now that would be the time to, to, to really, I think, actualize a plan to leave home. And so don't wait for the order. If, if, you, if you are of that population of folks that needs additional help, it's, it's, that, it's that time tomorrow to really to take advantage of that and, and, and really put, get, you know, get yourself someplace that's safer um, where, where you're not going to be potentially having to, to rush out. And, and you know, later, if we were to shift to an order, depending on what, the, you know, what these rivers and, uh, and streams do, which, uh, which, as it looks now, is not trending positively. So, that's kind of the, the picture as it looks for us. There'll be more information coming tomorrow. The, the, the huge purpose of this really is just to keep you the most informed and really to provide you with all the information that, that, uh, that you need to help to make the best, you know, safest decisions for you and your families. And so um, anyway, I, 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 you'll hear more from us tomorrow. We're going to continue this in this same format to give you the same kind of insight and information with what uh, we've been talking about today to provide you with what you need to be able to make the best decisions for yourself and your family. So with that, that that's all I have. And, and um, 
expect, I think, a, you know, a, a Facebook live type format event tomorrow around the same time. So with that, we're happy to take any questions that anybody might have. I know Ashley's moderating it. So as they get popped up into the chat, we're happy to answer. And Sheriff, one question that did pop up is, will we be doing any evacuations in advance? I know you kind of touched on that, but is that something that we're looking at? Yeah, so evacuations, so there's the evacuation warning stage, right? So if tomorrow, we're gonna get a weather report tomorrow. And as everybody knows, the weather can change, right? Although it has been trending, not positively, but in the other direction. So tomorrow, that looks like a, 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 if it looks the same as it does tonight, it, it, it's likely going to go to an evacuation warning. We'll put that in place uh, sometime either uh, late tomorrow morning or early afternoon. And so really, as I mentioned, that's the time that you really need to prepare, you know, make a plan to, to take yourself out of, you know, whatever area. If you saw flooding from, from before, that, that's, you know, that's the time to, to really get yourself out of that situation and hopefully into uh, something that's more comfortable. And then, and then, frankly, if we're going to watch, right, and we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to wait and see what the weather does, what these streams do, um, and really, you know, we we balance like the data versus having to needlessly kick people out of their homes, right? And so that's the balance we're making in terms of providing people with the most information. Uh, but that warning will likely extend to the point where we feel like, hey, now it, you know, now it, it flooding is it looks like it's imminent, and so um, that could be into the into the evening and then and then we'll go out and make those notifications and that's when it turns to an order and that's where uh where it's it's if uh if yeah people need to leave so um for their own safety based on you know the flooding that could happen in, the, in their neighborhoods thank you under sheriff and then a question for brian um can you take a look at pajaro river levels yeah absolutely and so um Hopefully my well, wrong screen share here. Let me do this. Maybe I did have it right. Let's see. I want this one. Hey, Ashley, can you confirm that you're seeing the uh, hydrograph? Verbally, <laughs> I can't see you. Yes. Yep, I can see that. Oh yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, so this is the Pajaro River hydrograph. Uh, right now, what we are seeing is a sharp rise in that river as well. Um, peaking, going into monitor stage, probably around, um, what is that, 6 p.m. on Friday. And this is a much slower rise of a river than San Lorenzo. But then peaking out, it looks like 25 and a half feet uh, around 3, 4 a.m. on Saturday morning then with a slow decline. But I want to show this in another way as well, because uh, flood stage is 32 feet. Uh, the action stage or monitor stage is at 25 feet. And if we look at kind of a, a, an envelope of solutions, potential solutions, we see it a lot more like this. Um, so you can see here those purple bands. Those purple bands represent a 5 to 25 percent chance of occurrence and the gray bands on the outer edges represent a zero to 5% chance of occurrence. So in other words, while there is a potential for us to go into flood on the Pajaro, um, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, the odds of it happening are very low right now, I should say. So going into monitor stage is, is much more possible than uh, going into flood stage. But either way you shake it, it's really important to be prepared for uh, the unpredictable. If we get a lot more rain than expected in that watershed, then we could see stuff really go down there. And I actually just had a thought. Is it, I don't know if there's a way we can put the uh, the one rain gauges, uh, Dave, into the either the chat or the comments, which can kind of direct people basically to the same to the same information you just saw Brian looking at just now. And people can watch that almost in real time. Yeah, that's a great that's a great point. There are resources on our county website, um, both storm preparation specific, and we will be shifting and providing links to those those resources. One rain is the rain gauge and river gauge information and other resources for folks um, so that you can keep informed as well.
All right, I don't think we had any additional questions, but um, we will share all of those links in uh, in the chat here on the Facebook page and it's on the county website. There's two big banners at the top of the county website, all for storm preparation, as Dave was mentioning. Um, and also, you know, know your zones, uh, you know, really follow follow the local news stations and our social media pages. And we're gonna try to keep you guys up to date as much as possible. And we're all in this together. So um, that will conclude today's uh, Zoom and we will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Thanks everybody.